You see, in Canada, when we dig ourselves into a hole, we don't use anything innovative like, let's say, a ladder to get us out. No, no. We just keep using the same shovel that got us there in the first place. I guess we figure that since the Earth is round, we should get somewhere eventually. So, we just keep digging. Keep digging until we find ourselves in a whole new world. And even if it looks scary, we're told it's the only way. Is there, would you say, a fundamental problem? Is there an underlying problem in the, in the monetary system, or is this the way it should be? No, I don't think there's an underlying problem in the monetary system. The credit is a good thing. Okay, well how's the rest of the world doing then? What? The Earth is $52 trillion in debt? To who, Pluto? Guess again. Okay, so the money system in Canada clearly doesn't benefit the people. Why hasn't anyone told us about this? Once a nation parts with the control of its currency and credit, it matters not who makes that nation's laws. Usury once in control will wreck any nation. Until the control of the issue of currency and credit is restored to government and recognized as its most conspicuous and sacred responsibility, all talk of the sovereignty of parliament and of democracy is idle and futile. Who are you? Well, I was only the 10th Prime Minister of Canada. Whoa. Well, you definitely won't hear any of our current politicians say something nearly that profound. Yes. And now I'm ironically on the $50 bills. That sucks, man. Tell me about it. Well, that's just one Prime Minister of Canada's thoughts on money. No big deal, right? The privilege of creating and issuing money is not only the supreme prerogative of government, but it is the government's greatest creative opportunity. The government should create, issue, and circulate all the currency and credit needed to satisfy the spending power of the government and the buying power of consumers. By the adoption of these principles, the taxpayers will be saved immense sums of interest, money will cease to be master, and become the servant of humanity. You too, Lincoln? For once, someone listened to what I said. Sorry, I just never read those statements in any school textbooks before. I made it clear that my greatest accomplishment as being president was that I killed the bank. And yet I too am ironically on the face of everything I was so passionately against. And then the private banks put your faces on their corrupt money? No offense, guys, but that's incredibly disgraceful. Especially after being assassinated. I'll say. I managed to escape. Right here, buddy. Whoever controls the volume of money in our country is absolute master of all industry and commerce. When you realize that the entire system is very easily controlled one way or another by a few powerful men at the top, you will not have to be told how periods of inflation and depression originate. Hey Garfield, weren't you president for only like four months? Well. I was killed shortly after making that comment. Oh yeah, good point. Well, anyone else? I myself prefer my New Zealand eggs for breakfast!
Isn't it kind of sad that we have to dig up what our dead leaders had to say about money instead of trusting the ones that are alive and in office today? I mean, we've seen how little they know about how the system works. So do uh, provincial governments ever borrow money from, let's say, charter banks? No. No? No. That's, that's just federal? No. As far as I know, I couldn't tell you offhand. And it's just, I, I just don't know why the government doesn't just borrow money from the Bank of Canada as it states, like in the Constitution and in the Bank of Canada Act, that it, the government has the right to do such things to prevent um, you know, things like debt from happening. Mm. Well, it's, um, you may know more, more about it, obviously you've researched a little bit more than I have. I know that they have a, a ratings um, on their uh, basis, which when they do borrow funds, um, they, uh, they get to an interest rating. And yeah, they, yes, they will borrow money from uh, banks. Now Canada is like the fly in the ass of an elephant in terms of the <laughs> overall importance in the world. Well, the, um, I'm not an economist, the Prime Minister is. Let's be clear about what the situation is. We have not been following the same policies as the United States. The economic and financial mess in the United States is disastrous. The policies have been irresponsible. We've made very different choices in Canada. We have a, we have a budget that's in surplus, not a budget that's in deficit. We're paying off debt in Canada, not adding to our debt. Are your policies working? Um, look, uh, I would say that overall we're being successful. We're keeping the economy on course. We're not going into a recession. We have a slowdown. But we are not in the kind of economic crisis we okay. have in the Should U.S. You and the world is entering an economic period unlike and potentially as dangerous as anything we have faced since 1929. What happened? that me, normally a very steady banker, will lend you the money to buy a home that you don't think. Well, well, well first of all, is, is it actually money that they're lending people? Oh yeah, they're, money, they're lending you money. Is it, is it actual money or is it... It's real money. It's not a receipt to present money? No, it's real money. Isn't there a difference between bank credit? Well, the, yes, there is, but, but let's go back to it. You're, you don't change the subject. I know economists will say, well, we could you know, run a small deficit, but the problem is that once you cross that line, uh, as we see in the United States, nothing stops deficits from getting larger and larger and spiraling out of control. Okay. Um, but no, but wait a minute. Unless you want to get, to, you're asking me what was the cause of the current crisis. Well, well, no. Like I, I just want to know where money comes from. Well, let me tell you something. Let me just take it one step further, despite the fact that's not where you want to go. I don't think we've necessarily lost control of our currency, and there are always restrictions in a global market in terms of how much control you have over your currency. But I want to go back to the. The, the real thing is this, yeah. is this is really the, gen you'd asked the question at the very beginning, but the financial crisis that we're in. Oh, well, it was just where does money come from? I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, it is. No, but wait a minute, but it's really important to understand. We don't, obviously don't agree on everything, but uh, he understands that, um, I think everybody understands that Canada is a sovereign country. And whether it's dealing with the United States or dealing with China, the fact that a country's a lot bigger doesn't uh, stop us from standing up for our interests and values.